Google just launched the new version of Android TV, only it's not called Android TV anymore, it's called Google TV. And it's only on the Chromecast with Google TV. Until now, I'm gonna show you how to install it on Android TV next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by MySudo. Take back control of your privacy with MySudo and download the MySudo app today from the App Store or Google Play. Go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. Hello, welcome to Hands On Android. I'm Jason Howell. I love it when opportunities like this appear suddenly out of nowhere. I'm sitting there thinking, what am I going to do my episode about? And then I come across an article, as I did today, on Android Police that references a Reddit post that talks all about the new Google TV interface. Now, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Last week, Google had a hardware announcement, and one of the hardware devices that they showed off, that they released actually to the public, is the Chromecast with Google TV. And one of the things about this dongle device is that it's no longer running Android TV, which is what has been powering our set-top boxes for uh, quite a few years now. It has Google TV. And people are like, okay, well, what's the difference between Android TV and Google TV? Essentially, Google TV is the next version of Android TV, and Google did what Google likes to do and renamed it to make it make a little bit more sense. Now, the problem here is that Google TV is only on that one single device, for now, I'm sure it's going to be updated and you know sent over to a number of different uh, currently Android TV devices at some point. But for now, you can only get it on the Chromecast with Google TV. Now, there are ways or rather there are a couple of ways that I know of to bring Google TV onto Android TV. One way actually results in an interface that kind of resembles the, the true thing, but it doesn't have recommendations and a few other things working uh, completely. And then there's another method, which is what I'm going to show you how to do today. So if you have, like in my case, I have the NVIDIA Shield TV from 2017, and it's running Android TV, and it's a great device, but I can show you right now how to bring the new Google TV interface to the NVIDIA Shield, and I'm sure this will work on other Android TV boxes, so you can kind of take a look at the one that you have and see if this process works. But for now, let's dive into bringing Google TV to the NVIDIA Shield TV. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to prep the Shield TV with everything it needs. In this case, an active USB port to connect to my computer. Uh, I'm going to need my computer, of course, and USB debugging mode so that we can issue terminal commands to it from the computer. So let's start with the USB port. Uh, on my NVIDIA Shield TV, I have a couple of USB ports uh, that I actually need to turn one of those USB ports into a port that can interface with my Mac. And this is actually a setting in Android TV. So if I go to settings and device preferences and storage, and then find the option that says transfer files to a computer using USB. And in this case, it tells me which port is the right one to plug into my computer and I'm good to go. Second thing we need to do is activate USB debugging. Usually I do this on handsets a lot. If I want to plug my handset into my computer and issue terminal commands or ADB commands through terminal, uh, we're going to do it on Android TV. So go into settings and device preferences and about, and we're going to find build there and tap on that seven times. And essentially, you know, it does this on the phone as well. You do it a number of times. It says, hey, congratulations, you're a developer. Yay, you've, uh, you've qualified. That's all it takes. So then we're going to go back and then in settings, go down to the newly opened and unlocked developer options menu. Now, find where it says USB debugging. Normally, I would say that you want to enable USB debugging at this point. That's the way it seems to work on phones for the most part. And that's what I expected to work here. Uh, you, you know, you would enable USB debugging, you plug your Shield TV into your computer, and then you grant the permission and you're good to go. That's how it usually works for me with handsets. But that didn't work when I actually tried this. So what did work for me, I actually ended up enabling network debugging. And as you see, that actually works for me. So who am I to second guess it? It works, I'm just gonna accept it, and I'm going to move on. So now on my computer, I happen to have the MacBook Pro. 
And what I'm going to do now is prep the MacBook Pro. And how you prep it is you install Android's platform tools. And I'm not going to get into how to do that. I've done this many times on this show before. So if you refer back to episode 10 of Hands on Android, you can find the details on installing platform tools. It's not that difficult, but everything you need is there. But essentially, I have a folder on my computer that has platform tools in it. So on the MacBook Pro, I'm going to go ahead and open up a browser and go to APK Mirror. Dot com. And uh, this is a place where I sideload uh, APKs. It's legitimate. It's by the folks uh, from Android Police. I love it. And you can actually go in there and do a search and find the Google TV Home app. This is what you're looking for, Google TV Home. Once you find that, you're going to want to go through the process of downloading that APK from APK Mirror to your hard drive. So go ahead and stash that onto your hard drive and let that transfer complete. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file from the downloads folder over to my platform tools folder directory on my computer. This is where the ADB files are stored. This is where I'm going to be doing all of my interactions. So now on my computer, I'm going to open up a terminal window. And within that terminal window, I'm going to navigate to the platform tools directory that I already know exists there. And uh, I'm going to issue the following command. In the case of the Mac in terminal, I'm going to do pound backslash ADB space push. Push, of course, is the command that tells me to push a file from my computer to the device space. And then I'm going to type out the file name of the Google Home launcher that was downloaded from APK Mirror. Once I've got that all typed out, space backslash SD card backslash. So basically what I'm telling it is I want to push this APK file that I downloaded to kind of the root SD card directory on the Shield TV. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit that. And this is going to push that APK installation file to the main storage directory on the Shield TV. Now, once that's there, I'm going to go over to the NVIDIA Shield TV. And I have an app here that I like to use in these cases, FX Explorer. I'm going to go to main storage within FX Explorer and locate there. It's really easy to see there uh, the Google TV Home APK that I just moved over. All right. So when I click this, I'm going to fire off the install process. I'm installing the APK uh, file. And at some point, I might be asked to permit unknown sources if I haven't done it already. If you get that prompt, yes, do that. That's going to allow you to install third-party apps in the sideloading way. Once you do this, though, you're going to have to go back to the APK inside of FX Explorer and click to install it again. But you've opened up the permissions, so it should work fine. Now, you'll get this window that has install down in the bottom right corner. What's a little weird, at least in my case, is when I move down there with the uh, Shield TV remote. I don't see any indication on screen that I'm actually on install, but I clicked it anyways, and it fired off the install process. And again, I'm not going to question it if it works. Uh, the install takes place, and yay, this replacement home app has been installed. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by MySudo. You want privacy for your daily digital activities? That's why you need MySudo. With MySudo, you can quickly create different profiles called sudos. Each one can have a working phone number, email, virtual card, and private browser. Whether you've been hacked, tracked, had identity theft, were scammed, spammed, or just want to prevent these from happening, the MySudo app will mitigate the common risks that we all face today. Download the MySudo app today from the App Store or Google Play. Go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. Take back and control your personal information with the MySudo app and download it today. All right, so we now have this uh, APK installed on my NVIDIA Shield TV. And this APK is a launcher. It's kind of like if you had a phone and you installed a third-party launcher and then you know you hit home to, to go to whatever the home, you know, the, the default uh, home launcher is and it pulls up that menu and it says, all right, well, which one do you want to use going forward? And you have to actually select it. In Android TV world, it doesn't work like that. They don't make it, Google doesn't make it easy for you to just switch between launchers. They really want to keep it locked down to just the Android TV interface. So there's no easy way to do this on the fly. That doesn't mean that we can't do it. And that's what I'm going to show you here using Terminal. So let's jump into that. On my MacBook Pro, I'm going to connect my NVIDIA Shield TV to my computer via the USB cable. On the MacBook Pro, I'm going to open up Terminal. And inside of Terminal, I'm going to navigate to the Platform Tools folder once more. 
Again, this is where ADB tools uh, reside. Now I'm going to issue the following command, which is actually going to disable the original Android TV home launcher. When you put this command through, it's going to disable the, the initial one. But don't worry, it's not going away forever. And in fact, your settings are going to be put in place. They're not going anywhere. You're literally using ADB to activate this like switch from your prior default to a new default. All right. And we're going to erase that. So the command is pound backslash ADB space shell space PM space uninstall space dash dash user space zero space com dot Google dot Android dot TV launcher. I realize that's a mouthful. Just look at the screen. It's probably a little bit easier to do it that way. And when I hit enter, the command, as you see, takes no time at all to issue. And let's go back over to the NVIDIA Shield TV and see what happens. Now, when we're back in the NVIDIA Shield TV, uh, everything's the same until I hit to go home. And once I hit to go home, I immediately see all the changes come to life. Suddenly, we've got Google TV running completely on the NVIDIA Shield TV. And as you can see, everything's just a lot more lively. It's more cinematic, uh, you know, large kind of banners of media, no more of those little squares and thumbnails. I mean, you have those, but it's inter intermixed and interplays with all these larger kind of interactive graphical elements. Google TV, by comparison, is just more recommendation driven, uh, and the experience really intermingles the different services on the device into a seamless presentation on screen. It's rich. It's inviting. It's really nice. I actually really like it. And with this method, you get all the hooks that make Google TV special. All right, so we've done it. We've officially put Google TV on a device that it's not supposed to go, and everything looks and operates the way it's supposed to. What if you want to go back? Well, it turns out that's actually really easy to do. So on my MacBook Pro, I open up Terminal. Again, I navigate to my Platform Tools directory. And here I'm going to issue the following command that's going to undo this. It's pound backslash ADB space shell space CMD space package space install dash existing space com dot Google dot Android dot TV launcher. Whew, it's a mouthful, but that's the command. Hit enter and boom back onto the NVIDIA Shield TV when I hit the home button on my remote. Once again, it switches over, there's a little pause, and then everything reverts back to the original Android TV interface like nothing ever happened. So awesome and so easy, really, when you think about it. So there you have it. You can take your Android TV device and uh, turn it into a Google TV device and you won't have to wait for it. Now, I don't know what the long term ramifications of this are. If Android TV receives an update, you're probably not going to get it if you're not actively running Android TV. And if you're on Android TV on a device that suddenly gets updated to Google TV, I don't know if you're going to get the push notification that kind of gets you on that track in an official sort of way. If you're not already running Android TV, I'm not sure if that's going to come to you if you happen to be running the sideloaded version of Google TV. So it's good to know that you can revert if you need be. Maybe at some point you want to jump on that track. You can revert and see if it's available and then jump back over. It's literally just as easy as plugging in uh, that terminal command uh, to see and jump uh, between the two. And it's just pretty awesome that you can do that. It's one of the things that I love about Android. It's kind of like magic. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you have success with that. Uh, let me know how it goes. Uh, hands on Android at twit.tv. Uh, you can find the show at our show page, twit.tv slash HOA. That's where you can go to subscribe to the show in any podcatcher that we have listed there or the RSS feed is listed there. Or you can jump out to YouTube and subscribe there if that's uh, your favorite place to watch this show. Thank you so much for watching. Big thanks to John Ashley for editing this episode each and every, and each and every week editing the show. And thanks to you. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.